Amen, church. Welcome, welcome all those of you who are here. It is just so exciting to be here in the house of the Lord. Would you say amen to that? Amen. Welcome those who are online. Thank you for being with us today. Today is a special day. We have been worshiping the Lord. We have been glorifying his name. We have been talking about the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to ask you uh, to remember, especially the moms. How many moms do we have here? Raise your hand. Okay. I want to ask you that you remember the day that you had your firstborn. For some of you, it's like, okay, Rolando, where are you taking me? Many years back, right? Well, you remember the excitement. You remember the pain, the agony. Uh, maybe looking at your husband right next to you is like, it is your fault, right? Going, I don't know. Maybe he didn't make it. I don't know what happened that day. But you got there to the delivery room, or maybe it was at your house or somewhere in a ranch, and, uh, and then it was painful, excruciating pain, but then you heard the sound of this crying, beautiful, cute baby, and then you probably forgot about that pain. My wife probably remembers. She was in labor for like 17 hours. She was looking at me like, it is your fault, Rolando David Aguirre. And then when we held Selena, our firstborn, in our hands, oh, my goodness. Oh, she was big. She's still big, but big. And then the doctor, I remember the doctor asked us and says, well, well you know, this baby is huge, like 9.5 pounds and 21.5 inches long. She looked at us and like, whoa, where's the baby coming? The genes, right? Well, excitement comes with new life. Today, we conclude the sermon series that we have entitled Acts, the beginning of a movement. We have taken you back in different passages in the book of Acts just to kind of recap how everything for us as church started. We have mentioned that the purpose of the church is to make disciples. And the plan of the church is to start where you are, your Jerusalem, you know, people close to you, but then far from the Lord. Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. We have also mentioned that the power of the church is the Holy Spirit. That the priority of the church is prayer. That we have to pray and pray more. We have also indicated that the people of the church is a diverse group of people from different walks of life. Backgrounds and ethnicities. As in the early church. Remember the Jews and, and the Greeks and the Gentiles and Jews and this community, diverse and sometimes complicated to, to just get along. Um, but, you know, we have also mentioned that the message of the church is to proclaim Jesus Christ. And finally today, we are going to talk about the ultimate power of the church, the Pentecost. The Pentecost. Yes, I said it, the Pentecost. You know, for some of us Baptists... We don't preach about Pentecost, and we, don't, we kind of skip the liturgical calendar. Well, Pentecost, that's for another denomination. But today, we're going to talk about Pentecost, because it was a unique, important, and crucial event for us. Although the Pentecost happened just one time, we need a 21st century Pentecost today. Not literally, but primarily, not theologically, but today we need the Spirit of God to take over our lives, our families, and our churches, and the world. So what does it mean, Pentecost? Well, the word Pentecost is a Greek word transliterated into English that means 50th. That's what it means. And it refers to a Jewish feast held 50 days after Passover. It was also called the Feast of Weeks, since it was celebrated at the end of the seven weeks following the Feast of Passover. It was also known as the Feast of the Harvest. The Jews celebrated Pentecost as the anniversary of the giving of the Mosaic Law. So it was a time of celebration. The Jewish community, all those who didn't live in Jerusalem, all those males with their families, were supposed to come to Jerusalem from like 25 miles away to gather in Jerusalem. So just to put it in our context here, it's like you live in McKinney or 
Denton and you come walking with your family to Park City's Baptist Church here in North Dallas to worship and to glorify the Lord, but also to offer a free will offering. That would mean that you will bring offerings with your family. It was a time of celebration. It was party time. A lot of people will come. You know, foreigners will come. It was the most attended party festivity in the Jewish community. Pentecost was a day of thanksgiving to mark the end of the grain harvest. You know, the Holy Spirit came on that day. People came to bring thanksgiving to the Lord for a, for a good harvest. Now, let's remember that our Lord Jesus Christ was walking with the disciples for 40 days. Then he ascended back to heaven. Ten days after his ascension and 50 days after the resurrection, the words of the prophet Joel and John the Baptist came alive. There are like three events very important for us as a church. First one, the death of Jesus and resurrection. Second one, you know, the Pentecost. And, and I think the third one is when we are born again. Would you say amen to that? Come on, show some excitement, please. Help me out. Okay, on the day of Pentecost, set aside to praise the Lord for the giving of, of, his, of his gracious provision to his church, to his people. The Lord began a harvest of lost souls. He began to use the church in a very unique manner. The empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Amazing things took place that day. For example, we cannot duplicate the events of the Pentecost. We cannot go to Jerusalem, enter the upper room, and wait to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has already come and has baptized every person who is saved in this room or online. We cannot duplicate the miracles of that day. However, while we cannot duplicate the events that happened on that day, we can duplicate the conditions that existed among the people of God on that day. We can see the Lord move in our midst in power and in glory in these days, just as he moved in those days. I believe that we need another Pentecost. We need revival. We were just thinking, Lord, give us revival. We need revival in our lives, in our families, and in our church. When, when we create that atmosphere, like the one that existed in the church on that day, we will see the Lord moving in mighty days in these days. Amen? Amen. Wow, I believe that. So one of the striking characteristics of the early church on the day of Pentecost is that they were together in one accord. The word accord means to have one mind, the mind of Christ. The early disciples, about 120 of them, male and female, were together in the upper room. They were united praying to the Lord. Unity was the calling card of the early church, and it should be ours as well. If we want the Lord's presence and power in these days, then we, as God's people, we are to walk together in unity. So... Let's examine some of the ways that the church was united back then, and we should be united today. The first one is they were united in purpose. Acts chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, this is what the word of God says. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So the disciples gathered and waited on the Lord together. Waiting on the Lord is an act of obedience. The message of Acts is that the church of Christ is God's instrument to glorify himself in the present age. The purpose was, and our purpose today, is to glorify God. Let me repeat it again. Our purpose is to glorify God in everything we do. Jesus told his disciples to wait in Jerusalem for the promise of the Holy Spirit. You know, and, and I think it was probably a difficult task for the disciples to wait. And I'm going to ask you a question. Do you like love waiting? How many of you like raise your hand and say, Pastor Orlando, I love waiting in line. 
No, right? We don't like to wait. Of course not. That's counterproductive or countercultural. However, these disciples waited in unity. They waited for the promise of the Holy Spirit. And the word baptized means dipped, immersed, and results in union with something. In this case, they wanted to be baptized and waited to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Spirit had baptized Jesus and empowered him for his service, his disciples also needed the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to do the work. The same trait should mark the church today. We are to strive together. This means to work together as athletes. We are a team. We are team Jesus. We are team Parsities. We are to work together for the glory of God among the nations, to work, to carry on that message, not only in Dallas, not only in our families, but even around the world. We each have different functions, but we should have the same goal. We might have different ideas, but we stand together. We might have different languages and cultures, but we have one mission. Satan is a divider. Christ is a uniter. Satan tries to divide families, but Jesus unifies us all. PCVC, Par Cities Baptist Church, is a very unique church. We'll be in existence for about 82 years this year. I did my research becoming here. Okay. We are very unique. We have a chapel service now that we just opened a couple of weeks ago. We have a sanctuary venue. We have a great hall at 930 and 1230. We have a Spanish service, and we have an online presence for now and forever until the Lord comes. We are very unique. We are a legacy church, but we also are the church for this generation. And we pray that the Holy Spirit will guide us in the next days. Statistically, people say that a lot of people will not come back to church. And I will venture to say that people will come back. That we will have a revival. That we'll have new families join in our church. You have seen it these years and these days. And you will see it today as well. Because the Spirit of God is moving among His people today. And we pray for that. And we long for that. Our purpose is the same. To be disciples and to make disciples. That's the purpose of the church, to be disciples and to make disciples, to be authentic disciples of Jesus Christ and to walk like Christ and to speak like Christ and to share Christ. We are all about Jesus. You know, I'm passionate about Jesus. I grew up in Colombia. I'm a PK. Uh, I'm a pastor's kid. Uh, I grew up in church. I, I, I don't know how many services I attended in my life. I fell asleep in many prayer vigils. I, I, you know, I, I did a lot of things growing up, but I'm passionate about Jesus. There was a time in my life that I didn't want to walk with Jesus, that I was resentful with Jesus. But then Jesus got a hold of me. He was patient because the Holy Spirit, once he's there in your heart, he will never lead you. He will never forsake you. He will put you back in your track. I'm getting excited now. Woo, just warm it up. <laughs> Second, united in prayer. Acts chapter 1, verse 14 says, They all join together constantly in prayer. Prayer is essential. Along with the woman. There were women in the room. Hmm, 120 in there. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. They prayed together. They prayed with and for one another. They waited together. They all join constantly in prayer. In the original, it says all the time, constantly. So we look at Acts chapter 2, verse 1 and 2. And this is what the word of God says. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Given it was the upper room, according to theologians and historians. And if you look at it, they were just praying in the upper room. Suddenly a sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Luke had introduced the beginning of Jesus' earthly ministry with his baptism, with the Spirit. Now in the book of Acts, he's doing the same. The church needed, the disciples needed the baptism of the Holy Spirit to become alive, to do the task, to carry on the mission. 
The same spirit who indwelled and empowered Jesus during his earthly ministry now would indwell and empower his believing disciples. God received a new harvest of believers, Christians, on this particular day of Pentecost. While they were praying and waiting in the upper room, the spirit of God came. The sound of a violent rushing wind from heaven, the place where Jesus had gone, you know, the sound, this noise symbolized the coming of the Holy Spirit in power. The same Greek word, pneuma, means either wind or spirit. The prophet Ezekiel and Jesus had previously used the wind as an illustration of God's spirit. The sound was like a blast. That's my translation. It was like a boom, like a boom, boom, blast. It was notorious. You know why? Because the spirit was coming to stay and to give birth to the church. It had to be notorious. It was a unique, precise moment for the birth of the church. It was not a common event. It was the start of a movement that it would change the story of humanity forever. The start of a new era, in a good sense of the word. The start of the last days. We are in the last days. We are the church. Nothing builds unity in a church more than caring for one another's burdens to the Lord. This is a church that prays. Let me tell you why. When I came the first time as a consultant for the position that I have right now, um, I came as a consultant. I wasn't interested. And then someone asked me, um, uh, do you want to come to Park Cities? And I said, no. <laughs> Confession time. Forgive me. Don't kill me. God forgives. You forgive. Let's practice this together. Bonding time. Bonding time. I say, no. Why? Why do you want me to come? You know. Flourishing ministry, church, families from there, well, gave all the excuses. And then two or three of you in the room said, can we start praying for that? And I say, prayer? Of course, we can pray. And I'm here. <laughs> there is power in prayer. You know? Third, they were united in power. You know, Acts chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. This is what the Word of God says. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, that's the original, tongues, as the Spirit enabled them. There is the axiom here. There is the principle here, the overarching theme here. There is no power without the presence of God. There is no power without the presence of God. There is no power without the presence of God. If God is not in you, residing in you through the power of the Holy Spirit, you are not alive. You are dead, walking like you are alive. You need the power of the Holy Spirit. So I always remember this story from Sunday school. What, what does it mean? The, the Spirit came, of God came like one piece. And when you look at the original, it talks like it came like one piece, but it was also like individual flames, okay? So individual flames, and they were speaking in other languages. So let's, let's bring it to the 21st century, now to May 23rd, I think it is today. And, um, and let's say that I speak no English and you speak no Spanish, and the only word that you say is taco, and the only way, the only word I say is hi. And all of a sudden, we are praying, and the Spirit of God comes, and then I hear you preaching in Spanish, and you hear me preaching in English. And then you say, what's going on here? The Spirit of God came to empower them to proclaim the message of salvation. You know, this is what the Word of God says. Acts chapter 2, verse 5 to 8. There were people from different places in there. Now, there, was, uh, there were in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment. Because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? And then if you go to verse 9 and 10, it, it gives us a description of people from Europe, Asia, Africa, and the Mediterranean world. 
They all heard them declaring the wonders of God in their own languages. They were amazed and asked one another, what does it mean? Some of them thought that they had too much wine. You know, they said they, they had a lot of wine last night. A lot of margaritas and tequila and whiskey. And then Peter, okay, pay attention, Peter. Remember who is Peter? If you're like me, you tend to forget some things. Peter denied Jesus three times. First time, are you, are you one of the disciples? No, I'm, I'm not. You, you speak like him. Uh -uh, no, 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 no. Uh, you kind of know him. No, I told you no. The same Peter stood up. He started preaching the gospel to them, showing the Messiah from the Old Testament until that day. And Peter goes on to preach the whole gospel to them, explaining the good work of Jesus Christ from the Old Testament. And the sermon was so powerful that people said the following in Acts chapter 2. This is what the Word of God says. When the people heard this, this is every preacher's dream right here. They were caught to their heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? And Peter, empowered with the Holy Spirit, he says, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Wow! Party at church! <laughs> Altar go full! And people saying, if it's not this, what is that? And Peter says, this is that. Prophet Joel, Old Testament. You know, that's the prophecy fulfilled in our midst today. People being transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. This is powerful. The same Peter who had denied Jesus a few days before this account is now bringing people to his feet. The gospel is transformational. The gospel is not a monolinguistic enterprise. The gospel involves reaching people from every tribe and every nation. This is connected to the vision of John at the end of his life in the island of Patmos. Where he sees a vision of the global church at the end of life. And he sees the following. After this, John secluded, horrible, horrible for any human being in an island to die for Jesus. He sees this. Look. After this, I looked and behold, a great multitude that had no, no one could number from every tribe, every nation, and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Oh, that was, that was the choir from every nation. Wow, awesome. They were filled with the Spirit of God. Now, there is two distinctions here. On the power of the Holy Spirit and, and how he comes that day. He comes to baptize the believers and he comes to fill the believers. Baptism means to be immersed. And everyone who was present there were baptized by the Holy Spirit. Baptism of the Holy Spirit comes when you profess Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. When you do it from your heart. The Spirit comes to your heart and she or he is mine God says, the Holy Spirit is the seal. Then, being filled with the Spirit is different. In the Old Testament, you see, there was a lot of occasions where the people of God had the Holy Spirit present in the, in the pillar of fire. Remember, the Spirit of God came in various occasions, and in the New Testament as well. The Spirit of God, the feeling of the Spirit of God is being controlled by the Spirit. Everything in our lives is controlled by him. And that's difficult for some of us. To let the Holy Spirit control us, my egocentric life, that's where it gets harder. Filling with the Spirit is that phenomenon. Both happened that day. They were not only united in prayer, in purpose, but they were also united in their work. 
Acts chapter 2, verse 4, says the following. And began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them. All were filled and began to speak. Each one was busy doing their part. I love the word enable them. The word enable them means that the Spirit of God equipped them to do the work. God saved no one to be seated doing nothing. I'm sorry. He saved all to serve and bless our world. We are one body in Christ. We are immersed, adopted into a family. You and I are one body in Christ. So we have the power of the Holy Spirit. I cannot get up tomorrow and say, I don't need you, hen. I don't need you, I. That happens with time. But sometimes in the church, that happens. We are saved to serve. So we have an opportunity here to serve our church. We are in unprecedented. I know that's a word that is overused now. I mean, COVID times, unprecedented times, cuckoo times. (laughs) We don't know if people is going to come back to church or not. And statistically, I'm one of those guys. I like to read a lot and read books and stuff. You know, there's a lot of research data that says that people will not come back. That that's the new norm. I will venture to say that we are about to start the most exciting times in our lives. I'm about to say that the Spirit of God can move in mighty ways in Park City Baptist Church. In each family here, God is going to restore families. God is going to bring people here. We're going to have to do more services. We're going to have to build an other building maybe. We're going to have to do a lot of good things because God is moving in our midst. That's the Spirit of God. And when the Spirit of God moves, there is freedom. I do believe that. So you have two ways of looking at it. You say, no, no, that's, that was just New Testament, oh, God, historically, dispensation. Yeah, I know that. I'm, I'm a theologian too. But I do believe that the Holy Spirit is at work. I know we cannot have another Pentecost, but we can have the Spirit of God moving in our lives. So what you do matters. If you open the door here, it matters. If you pray here, it matters. If you teach our children, it matters. Because we are ready for an awakening here. We need another Pentecost today. We need to pray for individual and collective revival. I need that in my life. I need to pray more. I need to ask the Holy Spirit just to take my life and to take the ministry and everything that I do. I was convicted this week to pray more for a spiritual awakening. I'm tired of the same old, same old. I want a freshness through the power of the Holy Spirit. And I believe that he is up to something in our church. I don't know if you believe it, but I believe it. I believe it because the Bible tells us That the Holy Spirit came not to reside in one occasion, but he came to reside in the hearts of every believer. To equip us, to enable us, to direct us, to empower us, to do his work. We don't know all the answers, but he knows the answers. So today, we're going to pray together, and we're going to do it differently. We're going to have some of the members of our church praying in different languages. We're going to pray for an individual awakening and a collective revival as well. So I'm going to invite you, if you're present here, you can stay where you are. You can come up to the front. Nobody's going to bother you. You can come and pray and say, Lord, just use me. I want to serve you. We don't want volunteers. We want servants here because God equipped us to be servants. Use me just as I am. I'm here. So we're going to pray in different languages, and they're going to come up to the stage to the stage, and we're going to pray in Thai, in Italian, in Russian, in the global language, English, and I guess I do the Spanish part. Okay, let us, let us just pray. Let us just pray. Let's just take a moment. They will take us back to the New Testament, to the early church. Let's just pray, and we ask boldly the Holy Spirit to come and to fill us. Let's start praying in Thai. ข้าแต่พระบิดาผู้ทรงสถิตในสวรรค์วันนี้ข้าพระองค์ทั้งหลายได้มาร่วมกันนมัสการพระองค์
วันนี้ข้าพระองค์อธิษฐานเผื่อการฟื้นฟูจิตวิญญาณในชุมชนในเมืองในประเทศชาติและในยุคข,ของข้าพระองค์ทั้งหลายเพื่อว่าข้าพระองค์ทั้งหลายจะมีความกล้าหาญที่จะรับใช้พระองค์ท่ามกลางโลกทั้งปวงขอพระองค์ทรงประทานความปรารถนาอันแรงกล้าในหัวใจของข้าพระองค์ทั้งหลายให้เชื่อฟังพระองค์และให้ทำตามพระนามพระประหับพระมหาบัญชาขององค์พระเยซูคริสต์ที่ทรงสั่งในพระกิติคุณมัทธิวให้ข้าพระองค์ทั้งหลายออกไปประกาศข่าวประเสริฐออกไปสร้างสาวกและบัพติศมาชุมชนทุกชาติในพระนามของพระบิดาพระบุตรและพระวิญญาณบริสุทธิ์ข้าพระองค์ทั้งหลายอธิษฐานทูลขอทุกสิ่งด้วยความเชื่อในพระนามของพระเยซูคริสต์เจ้าอาเมนสิญญาเรติดิชามอกราชเซ่ปริลโตนอดลอสปิริตุสันโตอีควาเลชิอายูตาเอชิกุยดาเนลามิชชั่นเนกับยามอริชเชฟูตอินควันโตชิตตาดินีเดลทูโอเรนยอายูตาชีอาเอสเรฟเดลีเนลโปรคลามาริลวันเจโลอาฟินเคลาทัวสัลเวตซ่าพอสระจุนเจเรทุตเตเลเปอร์โซเน่คิอันคอร์นอนติโกนอสโกนอ Uh, sia per uh, la gente della nostra comunità e per tutta la società uh, qui a Dallas, negli mm-hmm. Stati Uniti e in tutto il mondo. Uh, preghiamo che ci sia una trasformazione uh, dal tuo Vangelo uh, e che il tuo Spirito continui uh, ad avere una rinascita mm-hmm. e un risveglio uh, nei nostri cuori, nei cuori della gente che già chiami i tuoi figli. e nei cuori uh, di quelli che ancora uh, non ti conoscono. Uh, preghiamo tutto questo nel nome di Gesù. Amen. Здравствуйте, господин. Мы молимся о новой жизни и в том, что вы все люди знали тебя. Мы любим тебя, Боже. Бог верен. Бог это моя Бог каждый день. Нет только сегодня. Нет только сегодня. Слава Богу, Он добрые дела делал. Иисус, наш Бог, мы хотим почитать Тебя всю жизнью. Благодарви нашу церковь, наш народ, наша моя семья и наш мир. Сегодня помогите нам Прогодишайте вас и перестат спать. Да будет жива наша вера. Каждый день Бог. Я люблю Иисус. Амин. Father God, we come to you today and we thank you for the gift that is the local church. I pray today for unity in our local church and our collective church. We know that revival, when revival comes, you bring restoration, God. So I pray that you would convict and restore and equip our hearts to serve our local community and our global community, God. I thank you for each and every person in this room and for the way they love and serve in our church and in our community, God. God, I pray that you would just wash us with your grace, love, and mercy today. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Señor, tu presencia está aquí. Y donde está tu espíritu, allí hay libertad. Y te damos gracias, Señor, por la presencia de tu espíritu. Gracias, Señor, por el bautismo del Espíritu Santo, por la llenura del Espíritu Santo. Te doy gracias por cada familia que está aquí, por esta familia de Park Cities. Gracias, Señor, porque somos una familia dedicada a la gran comisión. Señor, y pedimos un avivamiento a manera individual, Señor, y también colectiva. Pedimos que tu Espíritu Santo se mueva. De una manera particular, de ahora en adelante, Señor, pedimos por familias restauradas, por personas viniendo a tus pies, por momentos, Señor, que no hemos visto. Queremos ver tu gloria como lo vimos, Señor, en las escrituras el día de hoy. Señor, queremos ver tu gloria y te damos gracias por tu presencia y por tu poder. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, for this opportunity that we have today, just to come before your presence. And it is only through Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, that we can be here. I pray for healing for those who need it. I pray for restoration for those who need it. I pray for a spiritual awakening for all of us. And Lord, Your will, 
nothing else, nothing less but your will always in our lives. That's our prayer today. And the people of God say in all languages, amen.